Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's recap and review Summer House Martha's Vineyard. This is season two, episode seven. So let's get into right. it. You guys, you know, sometimes before we get into the reunion, we get a little spicy, just a little bit. And I just have two things to talk to you guys about. So first up is um, OMFG Reality TV is um, giving some alleged information, which I think is true, but they say alleged, so I'll say alleged. They're alleging that the season finale episode will premiere on May the 19th and that the reunion will premiere on the 26th, which makes sense to me because I didn't think they were going to have a long season. I don't even think normally because when I looked at Summer House, the original, I the later episodes were a lot longer. But in the later episodes, they were like at these people's homes. Like they were in New York with the cast before they all got like a few days before they got to the Hamptons. Whereas we have these people all being from across the, you know, the country. I think Summer lives in L.A. And you got some of them living in New York. You got Shanice living in um, Florida. Like they don't. And then you got uh, what's his name? Amir lives in Texas they don't all live in the same space so I do think that they probably weren't going to get that many episodes plus when I looked at the um original Summer House their second season was around the same like 10 episodes 12 episodes so that makes sense so my spicy topic is Miss Mariah so Mariah tweeted this out and it would kind of confuse me, but she said this, another difference between Summer and I is her friend had her back and at least talked to her. My friend nor her husband did that. Hashtag Summer House MV. And I guess it's because people have been bringing comparisons between Mariah and Summer because of the way Summer has been acting very like erratic and aggressive. And, you know, they tried to label Mariah as that. But my thing about this tweet, from Mariah is I thought her and Jasmine were cool like you got back into the house you know as a friend of on top of that Jasmine said y'all had communications y'all were able to fix things but I guess Mariah still has some ill feelings so I wonder if that means when they film season three she'll be there and maybe Jasmine and her will still be working through their issues but I just kind of like it threw me off that I saw this tweet on my timeline because I was like I thought y'all was good I guess not <laughs> I guess she's still a little salty about the way she feels Jasmine and Silas did her season one. But let's get into this review. So the episode opens up where it left off, where we got Summer <laughs> melting down throughout the house, Noelle chasing after her, and then you have... Uh, Shanice and Bria, you know, Bria seeing crisscross applesauce in Shanice's bedroom door, door frame. And then you got Shanice with a booty cheeks out laying on the floor. And they're just listening to Summer and Noelle try to talk because everyone's trying to figure out, girl, what's up with Summer? So... We have Noelle talking to Summer being like, girl, what is wrong with you? Like, Noelle is really trying to be like, hey, girl, like, what's wrong? Like, really, what is up with you, sis? And Summer not really being vocal about her her feelings. And she's just kind of like, I don't like Bria trying to make me feel like I'm crazy. On top of that, she's like, you know, I'm just drunk and tired and all of this stuff. I, like, I let it go. So then we have this scene where... Noelle's in her confessional being like, I like what's really going on with, 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 with this girl. Like when I first met Summer, we were like this, we were cool. We really hit it off. But now I'm seeing sides of her where I'm just like, girl, like what what's really going on with you? So then we have this scene with Jasmine, Jordan and Summer where they go into into the room with her and they're holding like, you know, Jordan's hugging on her and she's breaking down and she's crying. And she is just like, I'm really trying my best. And I felt bad for her. And, and, and the reason why is like, I can empathize because I've been there where it's like, you are trying and it feels like at every turn something is coming at you or when you are trying to show up in a certain way, it doesn't come off that way. And I think that's what's up with with Summer, I know I've seen a lot of people be like, I think she's just um, angry about the whole Alex thing. I think yes and no. I think it is a combination of everything. I think it's, yeah, she really liked Alex and she thought Alex liked her and she thought like something was going to come of it, but it didn't. 
Like, and she's embarrassed because she really felt like they had something. Then on top of that, I think it's, she probably thought Noelle and her were going to be attached at the hip and they're not because Noelle was able to venture out and make friends with other people in the house. And I think it bothers her because she's like, she hasn't been able to do that. But also it's like, girl, I brought you into this house. You should be clicking up with me. Then on top of that, it's like, you got her grandma, you know, having her surgery. And last episode, when the grandma texted her, I missed you. You saw Noelle kind of make, not Noelle, you saw Summer make a face like, oh my gosh, and text her back and like, oh, I miss you too. I'll call you. So they probably have a really close relationship and she's probably stressed out that her, you know, her grandma going to be blind for a couple of days and she's always the one taking care of her grandmother. Then it's like her trying to figure out her relationship with this. She's trying to find her father. Then she's a product of a mom that is, a drug addict. She got a lot going on. She has a lot going on. And I think she's just overwhelmed and she's not handling it in the best way. That doesn't mean that it's right, but it's understandable. And I've seen a lot of people on Twitter and even seeing some of repost people who have thanked her for, you know, being on the show because they can relate to her. And I think that that's why I don't think she should get kicked off is because that's, I feel like that's your job as a reality star is to be honest about what you're going through. And the fact that there are people who are, have been able to connect with Summer says that she's still important to the cast, in my opinion. So it's the next day we find out that um, Nick is going... Uh, to run a marathon they're having a marathon on the um on the island we find out that nick has ran several marathons in like japan france london and in um you know new york so he's excited we also find out that they're having lux on the bluff they um that episode and Tasia and her sister will be staying at the house so he's like okay i gotta run this marathon we also gotta clean the house that house is disgusting their house is disgusting. So we have this scene of Natalie and Amir talking about last night where pretty much Natalie was like, you know, that's not my vibe. You know, the freak Nick was a little too much for me. And Amir was like, I know, babe. I know. Amir is annoying. Amir is so annoying. <laughs> He's so annoying. And Natalie is annoying. And here's my thing. I know some of y'all was in my comments saying that lady is a R-A-C-I-S-T. And I said, I don't, I don't think she that, y'all. <laughs> I don't think she's that. But what I will say after watching this episode, I I do I I feel two ways. I feel that Natalie is majorly and I mean majorly insecure and it's showing up with the way she's interacting with certain people because she's able to speak to Bria and Jasmine because Jasmine is pregnant and married. So she knows Jasmine don't want a mirror. Bria has Simon there, but I've yet to see her have a conversation like one-on-one -on -one the way she's had with Bria and with Jordan not Jordan, with Jasmine, with Jordan, Shanice, or Summer. So I really do feel like it's showing up like she's just madly insecure. I do also feel the same way where I'm like, Natalie is given, I like black men, but I don't like black women and I'm in competition with black women or I think black women are beneath me. But I'm leaning more so on the side of like, Sis is majorly insecure because we'll talk about it at the party where I was like, girl, get a grip. Get a get a, like like that lady don't want your man and you are this pressed and bothered. So it, it's it's giving insecure. It's giving insecure. So we get off of that scene and we see Jordan and Summer in their room. And Summer's like, I need to have some conversations with people. And one thing I can give Summer is at least she is taking accountability for what happened la that night before. I feel like it, it would have been far worse if she acted like it is what it is. It, we, don't, we don't need to talk about it. But she really did go around the house and speak to everybody. And even when she said in the truth booth where she was like, you know, I hurt people when I'm hurt. And she was like, it doesn't make it right. And she was like, I need to find a better way to like, and that, I think that's also what sucks when it comes to summer. It's like, you are acknowledging that you have these issues, but you're not pushing past that. Like, yes, you have these problems and you have valid reasons as to why you have these issues, but 
you need to go beyond that. That's why I said, girl, get into therapy. That probably will be your best bet to get help. Like the house has finally woken up. We see Nick texting Preston being like, hey, when I get back, we need to have a house meeting. I ain't gonna lie. I laughed when Nick was like, I don't know what they was fighting about, but they probably was fighting about me. I said, the girlies was going up for Nickavelli because Nick looked good with them fake tattoos. He looked really good. So... Um, we see everyone waking up. We see Bria and Natalie having a conversation where Bria is telling Natalie what all transpired between her and Summer last night. We then see Noel and Alex sitting at the uh, dining room table where they're talking and he's like, what happened? And she's like, we didn't go to bed till like 5 a.m. He was like, Summer, she was like, Summer lost it. Like she got so emotional. She pushed me. Then you see Shanice come in and she was like, she went crazy. So then... Preston is like saying that like I feel like uh, a lot of us need to take accountability for how we show up when we drink like it, it does like there's no excuse as you not understanding what type of drunk you are so then while everyone's t- talking at the dinner table you see um summer pop her head down now that she's in a better um like she's changed and everything so she knows everyone's talking about her alex ends up saying at the table like we need to start blaming everything on alcohol which is true but our alex you don't drink. So he got a point, but shut up. Like that's one thing I hate with some, when people who don't drink be want to be acting like holier than thou being like, well, that's why no, nobody need to drink just cause you couldn't handle your liquor when you was getting drunk. Don't mean you could tell me about mine, sir. But that's just how I felt. <laughs> that's just how I felt. So Summer's like, Hey, can we have a conversation to Noel? So they're like, yeah, while, um, While that's happening, we see that Nick plays fifth in the marathon. And we then end up finding out that one of his line brothers, who was the number five in his line when he crossed, unfortunately passed away, I guess, either that year. And he was like, the number five has been coming up a lot um, in his life lately. So he was like, I'm okay with being number five. Like, You know, that lets me know that he was running with me. So we see this conversation happen between Summer and Noelle, where pretty much Noelle sets her boundaries with Summer and Summer ends up taking accountability. She says, you know, I'm not making excuses, but she was just like, my anger I had was not directed towards you. It was supposed it was supposed to be for Bria, but she was like, when I get angry, I see red. She was like, I'm a lot more like Bria than I would care to admit. Like when I get angry, I see red. My thing again is I do feel like Noelle was doing too much. Like, well, I wouldn't even say doing too much. I just feel like when Summer told her to get away from her and stop touching her, I feel like Noelle should have just, like, don't touch her, back away from her. Like, you can clearly tell that the lady's inebriated and she's act- she's acting erratic there's no need for you to grab and hold on to her as well as like I wouldn't have been chasing throughout the house after her I got one you got at least like maybe two good times for me to ask you like hey what's wrong like what's up with you and you not respond to me or you give me like your ass to kiss for me to just be like all right girl you got it (laughs) you got it so but I did like I'm not gonna lie I teared up when they both started crying because you can tell that Summer feels bad for what she did because Noel was like, you know, I'm hurt because I feel like you like me and that you don't like me. And then Summer's like, no, I love you, but I hurt the people I love when I, I when I'm hurt. And she was like, I'll never put my hands on you again. I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. I am sorry for that. And then Noel says in her confessional, like, it will probably never be the same. Which is Noel's like Noel's right to say like once somebody put their hands on you like to me I probably wouldn't think that deeply about it because I mean like she shoved me now if she would have closed fist like punched me or slapped me or it would have been a different thing but also everybody has a right to set their own boundaries and if Noel feels like I gotta create distance between me and Summer then she has every right to do so every right so then they end up hugging one another and embracing so then we have this scene of Jordan Donald and Natalie where they're out by the pool like I guess they cleaned up because that pool was nasty when they was doing them aerial shots and um Jordan's like I don't even know really really what happened and so Natalie spills the tea telling Jordan everything that um 
you know, what's her name? Bria told her where she was like, Summer came in there going off on all of them. She pretty much said that she was envious of their friendship, saying that like what she had with you and Preston ain't really a good friendship. And you could kind of tell Jordan was like, oh, she said that. So you could tell she's like, are we going to have to have a conversation about that? So Nick finally comes back to the house. He has his house meeting. Bria out of nowhere, her and Shanice copping attitudes about helping clean the house. The house is nasty. It is like probably like a good 15 or 14 people in that house clean it okay <laughs> it's like I just don't get how they can live in filth because me and my friends are not like that I've been on a handful of like group trips and like we relatively keep it clean even when I've been at house parties or a kickback like if I'm there long enough I'll be like hey do y'all need help cleaning because I don't want you living in filth, especially if I don't live in filth. And that house is dirty. So Bria was like, I'm like, just tell me what to do, Nick. You know, like nobody helped me. And then they show that Bria's lying because when she had Bria's world or Bria's renaissance or whatever that thing, when she had the two little cute alpacas, you saw Shanice, Nick and Alex helping set up her stuff. So what are you talking about, Bria? Just say you didn't want to help, like Nick said. And even Donald was looking at Bria like, I don't understand why this guy escalated. So then and Nick was like, well, just clean the bathrooms. We have two bathrooms down here. Just Windex everything down, clean it. And I'm like, yeah, clean it. Because at the end of the day, everybody that's coming is coming to this house. You want them people to think y'all live dirty? Like, I, I judge people based off of how clean their house is. I'm not even going to lie. I think there's only been a few times where I haven't judged. And that's because I knew somebody was going through something. And they were like either in a depressive episode or they were overwhelmed by life and like they were stressed out that I can understand because I've been there but if you ain't got nothing going on clean your house and the fact that she is throwing a hissy fit about that was annoying me because then Bria's like I got too much going on you know Simon has an attitude because he found out he can't stay as long as like longer than what he wants to stay you know I'm here with my man I'm, I'm on vacation I'm not cleaning up after anybody I'm like Bria it ain't that deep, sis. It's, it's not that deep. Denise and Bria go upstairs with Simon. They pitching a fit in, in, you know, Bria and Simon's room, talking about, I'm not going to be cleaning up. It just, I didn't understand why she got so angry and got such an attitude. And I'm like, he just asked you to clean two bathrooms. And I'm, again, I'm like, I don't want nobody coming over to my house thinking I live filthy because <laughs> I'm not nasty. <laughs> I am not nasty so I was just kind of like why are you tripping bro like why are you this angry so everyone comes and sits down at the table minus Simon Bria and um and Shanice and so everyone's like oh we still having this house meeting and Nick is like yeah but before he said the house meeting he was like I kind of feel some type of way that nobody wished me good luck or texted me good luck he was like I wasn't expecting y'all to be out there with me but at least y'all could have did something Noelle copped the attitude where she was like sir do you not know what happened last night you thought we was gonna be out there running with you and I'm like no Noelle he was just asking y'all to acknowledge that he was doing something what's wrong with you sis <laughs> okay don't be picking up Bria and Shanice's tendencies, Noel. We like you. Don't do that. So he starts delegating like tasks. And so even Preston was like, when Nick gets into like his mode, he turns into like a drill sergeant. So he basically was like, you know, Summer does this. You got the bar. You had this is which I'm like, OK, y'all should do all of this stuff, because at the end of the day, everybody that's coming to this party is not just Nick's friends. We saw repeat people that were at the Freak Nick event and a few more people. So I'm like, don't you want this house to look nice and really like put together for your friends so y'all all can have a good time? Like, what's the issue? So... We end up seeing Shanice and Noelle outside. So I guess they didn't help with anything. We then see um, Nick's friend. I think his name was like Patrick. And then his cousin Bria pull up. And so he's like introducing everybody. And he was like, hey, have y'all met my cousin? And then we find out that, you know, Summer decided, you know what, after last night, I drank too much. I wild out. I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm going to just be sober for right now. I got too much going on. So I was like, okay, cool. Like that's, that's the best decision you made since you've been in this house. So kudos to you, ma'am. So we then get this, uh, we, we see Bria who is, 
um, Nick's cousin, she doesn't drink. So she was like, oh, we could be, you know, we could be sobriety buddies together. Like we can like do mocktails together. And she's like, okay, cool. Great. So then we see Tasia, you know, Nick is happy to see her and everyone's like, oh, okay. The, the week can begin. So we then get this scene of Jordan and Summer having a conversation in the bathroom where Jordan confronts Summer about what um, Natalie told her about what she said, you know, what Bria told Natalie, you know, they playing telephone. And so Summer was honest, which I'll get like, I think this episode made me like Summer a bit more in the sense of like, she, she took accountability. I think had she not take accountability, had she not to have taken accountability, I'd have been like, uh, get rid of her. But it's the fact that every time somebody confronted her about what happened, she was like, yeah, she was like, I feel like all my relationships are falling apart and I'm just trying to be honest about where I'm at with them. And Jordan was like, okay, okay, that was, I can understand that. So we then see everyone start getting ready for Lux on the Bluff. We see um, Shanice, Bria, and Jordan in the kitchen together. We see that Summer, I actually liked her dress that she had on, is like, comes downstairs. But before she came downstairs, Jordan is like, are you okay? And I forgot, I did not hear Summer tell Bria when she was arguing the night before, like, that's why your man don't F with you like that, or that's why he treats you like that. And I guess, basically, Bria, was like she said that to me when that was a personal conversation so then they do a flashback where we see Bria coming into Jordan and Summer's room talking about Simon saying like he has an attitude and I think he's jealous so I get I can get where Bria is coming from where she's just like I'm gonna keep my distance from her because I don't trust her because that is messed up like y'all are having a private conversation and because you got mad you threw it in her face so I can give Bria that where it's like yeah girl like I'm not gonna tell you anything anymore especially now that I know your behavior is to throw it back in my face so she was just like yeah I'm good but then we see Summer come downstairs and Summer's like would you like to have a conversation Bria like are you ready to have a conversation and Bria's like no I'm, I'm like not right now and Summer respected it and she walked away so I was just like okay you, you you showing growth we then see Mariah pull up Mariah's dress was actually really pretty okay well. the party is getting started everyone's pulling up they had a really decent amount of people there I think like a, at least a good 30 it looked like 30 to me maybe 30 or, or at least 20 um we see Mariah and Amir finally have a conversation although I had to laugh because you know the whole thing is supposed to be lux on the bluff basically luxury on the bluff but I said y'all not really giving luxury with pizza boxes and Tostitos chips and dip you know <laughs> it's like this luxury but I guess y'all said if we drinking out of wine glasses and we in our Sunday's best it's, it's given luxury so do you y'all do you so like I said Mariah oh did I say that no I didn't my bad y'all Mariah and Amir finally have a conversation and I was kind of annoyed with this conversation more so on Amir's side and slightly with Mariah because I'm like Mariah you've had conversations with him through, through text messages I feel like you're not gonna get what you want out of him so stop like asking him or stop trying to have a conversation with him also Amir irritates me because I'm like why can't you acknowledge that you were wrong you said it was an accident so own the fact that you made a mistake and move on so they're still talking about the whole like dog clothes in the wash and Mariah has a point my sister has a dog we've had fam my family has had family pets Ain't nobody putting dog clothes with their clean clothes. And I'm like Mariah. I, to a certain extent, I am allergic to certain dog hair. So I would have been irritated if my clothes were in the wash with like with dog clothes and I get dog hair on my clothes. And then I, I mean, I would have, I don't think I would have had made it uh, an issue the way Mariah did, but I definitely would have had an attitude, but cause I would have had to rewash my clothes. But I just feel like Amir is just a coward and he's a, he's lame to me because it's like, just acknowledge the fact that you did, you did something wrong. And he was trying to gaslight her basically being like, like you, I feel like you want me to say that I'm, I did wrong, but I'm not going to do that. And like, you know, we've already talked about it and it, and it's just it's like, shut up, bro. Shut up. Like Amir is irritating because like I've said before, he gives little brother energy. Like he's, he has like Peter Pan syndrome. Like he's a himbo. Like he's cute to look at, but he's stupid and he's aggravating because they like they and I think what made it more so for me that way is I saw a clip 
of Amir going to the reunion and he's being driven around like uh, like he had a chauffeur. He has like a cup in his hand, like a can, like it looked like twisted lemonade in his hand, just drinking and singing. And like, he's in the back seat of the car, but then he's coming to the frame with the driver all in the seat. And the driver like, is like smiling like, huh. and I'm like, if you don't get that, get the camera out that man's face, bro. Like sit down, shut up. And, and, and I said, I hope you tipped him because I, I would have known me out of hit the brakes real quick to make you jump forward because why are you in my face like that sir why so they ended the conversation we then see amir alex and nick talk about it and i'm kind of with nick like that happened a year ago and y'all are having this conversation but if they would have had a reunion last season it probably would have been deaded but i do think amir needs to acknowledge that like you did wrong but I also feel like from my state like when I'm looking at Mariah it's like girl you know what you got with him stop don't stop looking for stuff from him he's not worth looking for stuff for you know like his apology means nothing so we then see a conversation between Preston and and Summer where Preston pretty much confronts Summer being like girl I heard what you said about me, you, and Jordan. And Summer was, again, honest. She was like, it wasn't like a dog. Like, I wasn't dogging y'all out, out or anything. It's just that, like, I feel like our I, like our relationship is heavy. Whereas theirs, I envy the fact that uh, Noelle, Shanice, and Bria have light, fun energy. And it's just, like, it's heavy. And I'm, like, I, and I'm overwhelmed with that. So she starts get crying. And they go out on the deck. And Preston is like, girl, I love you. Like, I want you to cuss me out, pull me in and embrace me. Like, and I'll do the same for you. I'm not going to give up on you. And she was like, thank you. I really needed that. Like, I, I really needed that. And then we get this dual confessional with Jordan and um, what's her name? Jordan and Preston where both of them are just kind of like I wish she would have said something like that we were overwhelming her then we could have addressed it she said I'll and then Jordan says I also think Summer is looking for her peace like her like you know everybody seems to have like that one friend that's theirs and I think she's looking for her peace when she was like girl I thought we was a tripod you know and it makes sense because if you think about it like Shanice and Bria like this um I think Preston and Jordan are like, you know, same like this. I think people who are like floaters is like Nick. Maybe Nick and Alex are good. And so is Nick and Amir. Uh, but I think, what's her name? George, Jasmine ain't really. She floating. And I think Summer is floating as well. Noelle's getting closer to them. And I think Summer thought maybe her and Noelle was going to be like this because they're supposed to be friends. But it's not like it's not working for her that way. But I was glad that they were able to have that conversation and everybody was able to like move on and it not be a big deal. Like they had a real conversation about how they were feeling. So then we get to see Natalie's insecurities in full effect. So Noelle's friend comes and Amir was like, oh, is that Jordan? As he, as the lady walks by, he's like, oh, is that Jordan? And then Natalie, I guess, made a face. We couldn't see her face. And then Amir's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Like, are you upset about something? Like, what's wrong? And she's like, well, what you just said, is that Jordan? And I'm like, are you serious? Now, honestly, the girl and Jordan didn't look the same. That wig that lady had on was horrible. That, it was, um... A kinky wig, girl, you should have put some curls in that. Y'all, you, you can't be wearing kinky straight wigs and weaves. Y'all know it's going to flare up. It, it mimics our natural hair. Y'all know that once that humidity hits, it's poof. So I was like, yeah, girl. So she, um, but they paired them together. I think the only thing, reason why he thought that that was Jordan is because the girl had on the same outfit color. Like, it was like a, a nude kind of color. But the fact that Natalie was like, because you said that's Jordan, and Amir was like, well, she got six different wigs. I thought maybe she changed her wig. It's just... <sighs> insecure like insecure like women and men like do some of the stupidest and most dumb and violent things when they're insecure it's just crazy to me that like she really got in her feelings that quick we then see nick get everybody outside so he can give a speech like he did last time and we get more information about what really happened to his friend and why the number five is important to him so we find out that unfortunately his line brother named aaron but they all call him bivens he was number five in their line but he passed away recently 
recently and it was really difficult for her for for Nick mainly because you know they was they was locked in like that was his brother you know and he said he died in a freak accident he was like he was a seasoned swimmer so him drowning you you would have never thought he was like he was a lifeguard during the summer and it was just like dang and I'm not gonna lie Nick had me crying (laughs) like I started to tear up I was like oh good Good God, like, ah, we got to chill out. We got to chill out. But I felt for him. Like, and then when he said Mother Tuskegee, I I, I cackled because I said, that's why Nick is the way Nick is, y'all. He a TU man. If you know, you know, okay? <laughs> when he called it, called it Mother Tuskegee, I said, oh, my God, he is a TU man. <sighs> you know? So I felt for him. I really did. Like I, my heart went out to him. Like when he, before he did his speech, he talked about how five has been coming up a lot. Like he's, you know, he placed five. He said in his last word, I think he said he finished like five. I think he, I think he meant like five minutes, no, five hours, 55 minutes was his last like run. I don't know. He said five, five, five is like the his last run time that he had. And he was like, that just lets me know he was watching over me. Cause honestly had, he still been alive, he would have been here. So I just want to, you know, this is this party is for him and stuff like that. So they all turned up. You know, people got the shimmy, and we see Alex, Nick, and another guy, they doing the cap of shimmy. They then give us a history lesson, which I didn't want for them because I know what the Divine Nine is as an HBCU grad. But also, um, I get it, it's other people who are non-black who probably don't have an understanding of what the Divine Nine is. I just feel like you could have just briefly done that we're a part of the Divine Nine, HBCU, black sororities, all of that stuff. But to when they showed like the Hampton, Lincoln, and I was like, we don't need to see all of that. Okay. But I was like, all right, all right. So we see Noel, you know, she's an AKA. She's dancing with her friend that's there. Then we see them do like group pictures. You see um Preston, he do he doing the alpha chance. They're all dancing and having a good time. Like it's nice when they have these parties and we see other people come in. Because if you watch the original Summer House, that is what happens. Like people drive, they invite their friends to the Hamptons and they're having a huge party. So I hope next season either they go to a different location. Or they start to actually invite more people to come hang out and kick it with them when they have these parties. Because this far, the Freak Nick party and this party looks like it's been the most fun because there was other people there for everyone to, like, enjoy themselves. So... And I kicked, I, I giggled because you guys, you know, Jasmine is pregnant and Jasmine is like, oh, my baby's not pledging. And then you see Nick rub and he does like the, the shimmy to the baby's stomach. He was like, he going to be a noop. He going to be a noop. And I said, see, this is what I like. Everyone having a good time, just like really enjoying themselves. But we see Summer not having so much of a fun time. She's pretty much drained from like all the emotional conversations she's had today with Noel, with Jordan, with Preston. And then she's also not drinking. She did look really pretty in her confessional. Like that, that's a really nice look for her. So she's like, I'm gonna just go upstairs and change. So she changes and you know, she's just like, I just need a breather. I just need to take a moment. So everyone's having a good time. They doing the, um, I think I saw them do the Cupid shuffle or the biker shuffle. They hit the electric slide. Jad Jordan's on her, you know, her mixing with the mixes. Everyone's having a good time. We then see Simon go upstairs and he has this inflatable flamingo and he comes down and everyone's just kind of looking at him like what is this white man doing (laughs) and so Bria gets embarrassed like I mean in like she is hot Nick is even irritated but he's just like I'm not surprised because last time he jumped into the pool and they was like can he swim then they remember they showed the flashback of him standing like dancing on top of the table Simon is wants to be the center of attention because there was like really no need for him to put on the pink flamingo outfit. I didn't have a problem with him doing it, but I can understand why Bria was embarrassed. She didn't start talking about she was going to stab the flamingo with a knife. She Bria is violent. OK, we just gonna have to call a thing a thing because I said, first of all, you don't need to stab nothing with a knife. So I was glad that Preston was like, nah, let's chill out. She then tells Simon, like, you're you're causing problems between me and my housemates. You need to take that flamingo off. I told you not to put that on. So they do a flashback where we see Summer, Bria and um, Simon in the flamingo outfit and she was like yeah Summer was like I don't think you should wear that Nick's thing just do it by the pool and you know 
Bria agrees with Summer, like, don't wear it, but he don't really care. So things get worse because you see her tell him, I'm going to, like, I'm going to break up with you if you don't come upstairs with me so we can have a conversation. We see Phil pull up. Phil kind of being like, oh, I, I'm underdressed. He over there rummaging through cabinets, talking about who got prenatal um, pills. Why are you going through these people's cabinets, sir? But, you know, he trying to mack on people. He was trying to talk to Tasia's sister. And then, um, you know, Nick was like, there's a time and a place for Simon's antics. Tonight wasn't it. Like, you don't need to be the center of attention. So then we see Bria, like I said, Bria got violent because, or mad aggressive. So Simon has the flamingo on. Bria yanks it, like, I mean, like, yanks the flamingo's neck. We see, like, when she does that into the hallway or in the four, four-way area, or foyer, you see Alex and Shanice having a conversation where they both are like, and then Shanice and Alex step back together. And then a person is like, chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. It ain't that deep. It's not that deep. And they all kind of looking at Bria like, girl. And she was like, he's causing problems for me. Come on. Then Simon farts. And I guess it smelled horrible because everyone's like, it smells like something crawled up his ass and died. So everyone's walking upstairs. We see Natalie, Tasia, and Preston go up. Not Preston. Uh, Donald go upstairs and so she's about to tell you know them some tea that she got in the house because Natalie is messy and insecure and then Simon and Bria get into it again in the um in the kitchen not in the kitchen in their bedroom she was like I'm gonna break up with you because you're not listening and I told you you're disrespecting me and you're embarrassing me and he's like you're gonna break up with me over a flamingo outfit she was like yes because I told you not to wear it <laughs> and then the episode goes so off it was a mess but it looked like next episode gonna be funny because i really i don't know who nick was yelling at it looked like he was getting at noel because he said i know you want to be included in everything but you not like he said something to her and noel kind of looked like so i wonder i wonder what's about to happen i, re, I really do but yeah y'all that is it that is all remember to be bravely authentic and definitely drop down in the comments below and i'm out y'all deuces